And uh, excellent. First of all, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day for letting me ask you a few questions about been. what you do. Huh? Yeah. It has been a it has been a busy day. Okay. Well, good. Well, good morning out there, everyone. I am Malcolm with Best Business Reviews TV, and today is May 16th, 2019, and my main man here, Dwayne, is one of the best persons in real estate that you can go to to get your solutions uh, solved, and I uh, just wanted to invest some time with Dwayne today and uh, have him tell us about uh, a little bit more about himself and his business. So uh, we all want to get to know you a little bit more, uh, Dwayne. Uh, what is it that you do in real estate? Well, I appreciate the accolade there very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I came into the industry just to give you some background as a editor of a commercial real estate magazine. Oh. And so I was confident that I could pick up uh, at this point in my life and, and be an effective realtor. Hmm. which turns out I am. Uh, so there's something to do with the graying hair. That, <laughs> uh, it does. It gives people some sense of uh, experience and confidence. Interesting. But I really, I think that what's at the heart of my success in real estate, Here, here's the specialty that I have. I am, I live in rural North Idaho. That's the panhandle of Idaho. Uh, mm -hmm. There are three big lakes here. They're uh, kind of the inland Great Lakes as far as we are concerned here. They are large lakes. And uh -huh. uh, the one I live on is Ponderay Lake. And uh, in Sandpoint, I live north of Sandpoint in the valley. And uh, Ponderay Lake is a lake that I grew up on. So I'm very familiar ah. with all that goes with that. There's also just uh, an hour's drive from my house uh, to the west, directly on the other side of a, uh, the Selkirk Mountains there is Priest Lake. You can look these up on, a, on any Google map or a map. And uh, Priest Lake is another go-to destination. It's really a clear lake. Each, each of the three lakes has its own environment. Ponderay Lake is known to be like Lake Tahoe back in 1955. Oh, nice. uh, it's just not crowded. It's got uh, uh, a lot of uh, undeveloped state forest land on the north face of it, or actually that's the eastern face of it, okay. and uh, just not a lot of room to build on the water, and most of that's been taken up. Mm -hmm. Coeur d'Alene Lake is where my office is as pronounced Coeur d'Alene. Ponderay is, and Coeur d'Alene Lakes are both French words, so it looks like Pandoreal. <laughs> uh, but it's Ponderay. <laughs> that's how that's how I was pronouncing. I was pronouncing it Pindorile. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Good for you. A lot of people do. Uh, uh, that's the first sign uh, that you're out of state. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you can get a guy like me who will actually teach you how to pronounce these mm -hmm. strange names, like in uh, Kootenai County, it's right. people call that Kootenai or something. So like did that. I? Yeah. yeah, but it's mm -hmm. actually Kootenai. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a tribe here, an Indian tribe called the Kootenai tribe. Uh -huh. That's where that comes from. Uh, good folks in that tribe too, I might say. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so that's kind of the, uh, if you look at a map of the panhandle of North Idaho, I work three counties. I work Kootenai, Bonner, and Boundary counties. And I'm a land, ranch, and waterfront specialist I oh wow I don't okay really, I don't really like doing uh, city type real estate all right I could probably do it very effectively and uh, but I wouldn't be as happy because mm. I, I, I'm retirement age you know I don't want to mm -hmm. compete with the 25 year old realtors and, <laughs> uh, they have fun and the competition is a lot steeper in say Coeur d'Alene Post Falls area than it is in the rural Hmm, okay. Uh, my kind of background and experience with North Idaho is uh, very good for what I do because I love the rural lifestyle and I play in the rural land here. Mm. I like to fish. I like. I don't hunt as much as I used to, but I know a lot about hunting. And, uh huh. Uh, so I can relate to people. I also have a background in college in forestry, so I can relate to people that have timber. Mm. And can help them with uh, advice and even who to go to for 
uh, important things they need to know. Uh, to know. There's quite a bit to the kind of real estate that I do because really you have to know the land, the water, the soil is the land, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the the type of timber that we have here uh, varies from one location to the right. other. Uh, where are the snow belts and where are the banana belts? Banana belt north of me here is Bonners Ferry area. It snows half as much there as it does here in Sandpoint. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, it's because of the Selkirk Mountain Range takes all the snow out of the air before it gets to Bonners Ferry. Interesting. Okay. Not all of it, but a good portion of it. Although mm -hmm. they've had some pretty severe storms up there on occasion, but we're we're an inland area, so uh, in fact, the you you notice the time zone difference. Uh, it's an easy assumption to think we're on mountain time. That's what I thought originally. Actually on, we are on Pacific time, mm -hmm. uh, Malcolm, because uh, back when the state was first founded. Uh, we could easily have been part of Washington State because of the way the mountains are here. The Rocky Mountains are pretty steep. You got to go through some significant passes mm -hmm. uh, east east of Coeur d'Alene in order to get into Montana. Uh -huh. And so the uh, surveyors that uh, made the border line of this area uh, determined that the real um, merchant market was in what they called at the time historically the Inland Empire. That includes Eastern Washington and this part of North Idaho, the Panhandle. Okay. Uh, because there's no mountain interrupting that that uh, commerce. Mm -hmm. So they put us on Pacific Standard Time. But when you go over the mountains into Southern Idaho, you go into Mountain Standard Time, one mm -hmm. hour difference. And like if I go to Montana, which I do frequently, uh, it's a it. I lose an hour going over, but I gain an hour coming back. <laughs> so, back. You know, it's all the same. <laughs> right. It doesn't take away from our life. But right. I just needed to explain that to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what do you got for questions? Well, uh, well, as uh, as as people know out listening, uh, watching this, I want them to know, and, and they already know that nobody likes dealing with a stick in the mud, which is why I gravitated towards you because you have this amazing personality and you treat people with respect and you care about people. Uh, so, well, thank uh, you. that being said, uh, you told me now you're that, chopping out again. So oh, I'm sorry. I lost you there. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, image, yeah, but it's like a photograph. Okay. Um, uh, I don't you, know if I'm choppy to you or not. No, but, everything's uh, smooth on, on, on this end. Um, but yeah, I, I, the reason why I gravitated. That's the struggle with rural life and not being on my Wi-Fi. I'm using my <laughs> cell phone, so uh, that might be why that's happening. Oh, that's right, uh, because no, in certain areas. Not, not getting you back. Is the sound on? <laughs> Hey, can you hear me? How's the sound? I got visual, but no sound. Okay, geez. there you go. Oh, you're in your car now. <laughs> hey, 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 the thing is, uh, the, 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 I don't know what happened, but the internet stopped working at my house, so I had to go to the library. I had to get it, I had to make it work. Yeah, that's right, and you know what? Uh, I just made a comment on your messenger that uh, interruptions like that are actually testing ground tools. Uh, it, uh -huh. the, ones, the ones who quit, and I've seen people walk out of meetings because things weren't going right. Right. You can't walk out of a meeting. Uh-uh. <laughs> and, and you didn't walk out. You solved the problem. Mm -hmm. And so did I. I'm now on my computer. Ah, okay. <laughs> I had to charge my computer because about 10 minutes to two, I recognized that I don't have enough juice here right. to run a video. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had to go plug it in in the other room so it wouldn't interfere with my cell phone, but uh, my cell phone is not connected to our call. So, right. uh, so it won't interfere. Mm. And, uh, and I have it muted. So Perfect. Oh, let me do it. In. Save the mind. <laughs> no, I'm still with you, uh, Malcolm. I like your attitude. You have a very uh, loving, strong, uh, go get it done kind of attitude. Thanks. And that's uh, the way we are up here. That's mm -hmm. the way I am. I, mm -hmm. I've had plenty of adversity in my time. Right. 
But, uh, and the reason I'm a realtor at this age is because I was a jack of all trades. I didn't have a profession that gave me a retirement. Hmm. And I just moved around too much. But uh, I'm not complaining about that. I'm uh, actually a pretty good realtor for the reasons that I don't quit. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, give up. I find solutions and it makes me a good negotiator in real estate. Uh uh, because I've seen uh, other realtors in situations where sometimes on the opposite end of my business table where somebody really doesn't understand that it's not black and white. It is gray. It can be negotiated. Mm -hmm. And there's always a happy ground if we stay on the table long enough. I'll give you a short example of that. Is, uh, this winter I had a transaction go back and forth five counter offers and then two one-time statements on a contingency uh, that once you wrote that statement, that is it, no more. Mm -hmm. And so we actually went back and forth seven times to the closing settlement and, and everybody was happy. They all got what, what they wanted because Excellent. we still put. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what is necessary at times. And uh, there's everything that you could ever imagine, Malcolm, uh, happens in real estate and the reason it's like that I think is that generally speaking there's it's a major decision right buying or selling mm -hmm. uh, it's major people really uh, get stressed out over major it takes a uh, warm-hearted old guy like me to uh, <laughs> settle down now you know I've been through that and you know we can get this done sometimes I right. actually irritated too sometimes it's real frustrating on folks but uh by and large i'm a pretty content guy at this age and i think that has a lot to do with my success because i i have enough experience to understand well wait a minute let's look at it this way there's and here's part of the core thing for me malcolm you'll you'll learn this about me i really think you will and that is um in the human life, let's take a classic movie, for instance. Uh, there was a point in time, yes, I wanted to be a movie writer. I wanted to be a script writer. So really? To uh, Hollywood. Uh-huh. Oh gosh, I couldn't live down there. Uh, <laughs> but I recruited to Oxnard, and I really studied. I studied at UCLA for a time uh, in script writing. And something that I came away after reading maybe 15 books on script writing is a sudden realization that here's what happens in the classically good movie that everybody loves. Mm -hmm. the, the hero or the heroine has a dream they want to attain. And uh, so it's a bumpy road though. And it's never a smooth climb all the way to success and then they pick the apple and eat it. Mm -hmm. It is always a bumpy road. In fact, in, in something like uh, Sherlock Holmes, Moriarty is the oh. adversary. Yes. Okay. The adversary in any classically great movie is always the perfect adversary for the hero or the heroine. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are a match. They are like, who's going to win this? Uh, my gosh. Uh, and the audience sits spellbound while it goes, you know, we get close to something somewhere around two thirds of the way into the movie. And then some calamity happens to the hero or the heroine. Mm -hmm. and they collapse downward and it's either a tragedy or a classic. Mm -hmm. The classic is when the hero or the heroine reaches that, what they call an elixir. That's the thing that they were after. That's the right. dream that they were after. By, they do that by overcoming the adversary finally. Mm -hmm. And what I've realized in my own life in that metaphor, in that parallel, and it serves me in real estate, I can't tell you, to no end. It serves me all the time because I have this model in my head that says, well, look for the mentor. A mentor is going to show up. He's going to give me a word of advice. Maybe it'll be a child, maybe be a woman. But uh, I'm going to pursue this course to sell this property or to find this perfect property like you described for yourself, and I know it exists. Right. I'm gonna pursue that until I find it. Mm -hmm. There is no quitting. There's no giving up. 
Uh, if you give up, I'll reach through the internet and slap you alongside the face. And <laughs> that's the kind of kind of ability partners I like to work with. Exactly, we hold each other up and we hold each other accountable, and we get things. We are accountable to each other, and uh, you know, any good team is not going to reach the end of the race well unless they hold it together. Right. And uh, yeah, it's just that way. And and, yeah. and so so what do you like best about serving your customers? What's what's the favorite aspect in real estate when you serve your customers or clients? I have a private goal inside me. There's only maybe uh, out of the last twenty or thirty customers I've had where uh, I didn't have a lasting friendship. My goal is to make a friend out of this person by. Oh by understanding the heart of their need. Why are they moving? Why are they selling? Why are they buying? What, what are they up to? What do they do for the rest of life while, while all of this stress is going on? Mm -hmm. I learn a lot about people through the stress and how they handle it. Uh, how they handle it. And uh, uh, I'm very, very empathic. I really have a heart that cares. Mm -hmm. I think you do too. And uh, so I try to, uh, apply the same principle to them or to teach them a lot of people see me as kind of a grandfather uh -huh. and uh, I can tell you truly out of my client list uh, over the past seven or eight years here I have uh, full families that are like my own family wow kids, all the way up. kids still call me papa or grandpa <laughs> Nice. And uh, that's that's a delight to me mm -hmm. because it means that I've helped them solve the problem. I got a postcard here just last week from the most recent sale I made, which was one of the hardest. It really was one of the most difficult. It was a VA loan. The appraisal came in low. Oh, boy, we got a deadline here just in a week and a half. How are we going to get this in shape so that we can get that loan? Mm -hmm. And uh, we all chipped in because I wouldn't let anybody quit. I wouldn't quit. I wouldn't let the buyer quit. And it was right. a couple of the, the male side of the buyer was he was ready to fight. He was ready to really blame this and blame that. I'm saying that out of love in his own heart. <laughs> he was uh, uh, an ex-Marine. And so he just narrow-minded, go for it, let's get it done. And I got him on that path and we got it done and we closed on the closing day, which saved him wow. $7,000 in interest payments. Oh. So, uh, that's the thing I was carrying around in me is we got to close by that date. And so with the penalties. You're going to have a whole month of more interest on your uh, loan. Mm -hmm. We did that. Uh, I got a business, I got a complimentary card from his wife who said, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but she said basically, oh, Dwayne, we just love you. We think you're the greatest realtor because we did it. We did it. We were losing. It was just like a movie. Right. We, we were losing all the way. Every time right. we turned around, there was something in front of it. But right. We didn't quit because I wouldn't let him. Mm -hmm. And even the other uh, agent on the other end was complimentary. Uh, it was a woman, and uh, uh, she's a high performer. I could see that. Mm -hmm. uh, she was uh, real frustrated on a few days with <laughs> me or with them or with her client. And I could uh, even see through her that I think I know kind of what your client is experiencing. Uh, it was an elderly couple who needed to move, but didn't even want to go through the sweat and you know of moving it was right. tough for them mm -hmm. but we did it we did it and uh, so the card said we did it and she was very excited about that thank yes. you so that's that means more to me than actually a paycheck does nice very I, nice I like getting the paychecks <laughs> of course Don't <laughs> even think otherwise because <laughs> it's hard work uh, it, it is a good war, a good realtor and most of the realtors who go through all the training and have some time on the clock mm -hmm. are good real you know some of them get a little bit unethical some of them get downright mean mm -hmm. or frustrated or clever cleverness doesn't work oh. uh, no it doesn't uh, you can be clever but uh, you'll get caught sooner or later and mm -hmm. so why do that why not be honest? Why not just look at the facts the way they really are and then find the solution? Because in a, again, in classic movie writing, 
Malcolm, I'm saying this to you because I know you're a very auditory, very uh, videographic man, and uh, I think you've got some serious stuff ahead of you that I really am attracted to. And uh, you like recording and that sort of thing. You can see the piano there. That's yeah. just one of the pianos in my house. Ah, wow. Uh, so uh, uh, we're, we're very similar in that regard. Where my track of thought was going is that uh, I totally lost it. Um, ask me a question. Save, <laughs> save me. How, well, how do people find you to get your assistance with, uh, and you specialize in, uh, and, I, and I like that you specialize in certain things, you're not trying to do everything, you specialize in lake property and farming properties? You can call it farming property, but there are several kinds of ranch. Mm. Uh, I call it ranch because there's ah. agricultural, like, uh, uh, there's some pretty large cattle herds here mm. in some of the grassy land, bottom land uh, of the valleys. And, uh, you know, Angus herds and that sort of thing. I know some of those people personally. Uh, we have uh, timber all over North Idaho. It's Northwoods type of environment, timber on the mountains and all that. Right. Uh, you can, we have some of the best tree farms in the United States, right north of, in Bonners Ferry area. And one of the guys that started the first tree farm, I'm going to brag on him, is Lonnie Merrifield of Clifty View Nursery. He mm -hmm. was a classmate of mine in college when mm -hmm. we were in College of Forestry at University of Idaho. And he came home and used his father's ground to mow it off, cut the timber out, get it out of the way, and start planting trees. And his business just took off. Now he's got a private uh, residence that he and his wife go to, or his kids go to on occasion, on one of the smaller islands of Hawaii. Mm. And he still has his ranch here, and he owns probably, I'm going to guess he owns uh, probably eight or 900 acres of timber ground. Wow. And they're raising trees of all kinds. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm, I'm a ranch and land guy, and when I say ranch and land, I include farming. Farming is crop-oriented. I see we what you mean now. Mm -hmm. Mostly hay. Or alfalfa for feed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the kind of crops that you'd have in Iowa, like corn, don't do well here. So. Right, right. Uh, but also, I include lakefront because I fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. That's my recreation, and I can always carry a fishing pole with me when I go look at a lakefront property. Mm. Right? Makes sense. <laughs> Sometimes I have to go in my boat, uh, and oh gee, we gotta take the boat across the lake because that's the fastest way to get there. Oh wow! Oh. <laughs> Row a line or two, and uh, you know that's I'm nice. just funny, but it's true. Mm. Why not? You know, we need to have a little bit of fun while we play and work together. And Absolutely, me happy in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've got a wonderful wife. My home here is harmony. I can come home to harmony. Nice. Now we both work on that. We we have to work on that. We're right. Sometimes I come home grumpy and stressed, and she she got the way to calm me down. That whip is so big that I. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm teasing. Oh yeah, but I know what you mean too. <laughs> That's awesome. So I want to learn a little bit so that I'm not just wasting your time here. Oh, you're not some, at all. Well, you have a um, a growing business or a uh, web presence that you're building mm -hmm. on interviewing different kinds of entrepreneurs. Is mm -hmm. that right? And uh, so, man, I'm delighted and honored that you would pick me out of the ether out there and, and find me. <laughs> Uh, we connected on yet another level, but uh, right. uh, we won't go into that. That's that's fine. You saw what I did for a primary living, and mm -hmm. uh, it's good for me to talk about it. It's good for me to be on the spot about it because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, makes me think about what I'm doing. <laughs> right? Real estate is such a volatile market. Mm -hmm. It can crash. It can crash big time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't like, uh, once I had a hospital stay, uh, pretty serious one too, and my income stopped. 
mm. because I didn't have any residual income. So right. I'm looking for that kind of thing as well as being a realtor. The big bait about real estate is that if you are in the right kinds of properties, which ranches and lakefront can be, mm-hmm. sometimes they're million or multi-million dollar properties and the commissions are very good. You know, mm-hmm. I can make a commission that's worth a year's salary or more. And uh, But those are hard to attain and those are hard to sell. Ah. Uh, that's what real estate attraction is all about though is mm-hmm. uh, and people who are selling those kinds of properties they need they do need in fact experienced uh, forthwith reliable realtors and uh, so you asked me how I get business mm-hmm. I went through all the uh, paid for pay to play type things like Zillow you can the the guys that are showing up on Zillow where most of the population seems to go right uh, uh, I just got a message in on my phone uh, okay I've got about 15 minutes to wrap this up oh yeah, yeah sure so, sure I didn't want to take this long but it's been so interesting <laughs> well, I hope so yeah, and I, I want to do more of this. I'm I'm interested in helping you. Uh, in fact, this is part of the business of real estate: helping your client, mm-hmm. uh, bringing value to them, not sucking value out of them. Right, I agree. That's where I'm at too. With a lot business. of the uh, rumor about realtors, and and it's true in many cases, quite frankly, is uh, they're you know they'll suck it out of you if if you let them. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, not me. Not that's not the way I do this game, and you know, I do treat it as a game sometimes. But the game is to get the elixir at the end of the movie, mm. to, mm-hmm. to for my client. Mm-hmm. And uh, every every little uh, pathway is a separate skit, a separate movie, so different characters involved. Right. And, uh, there's trap doors, and there's trip ups, and there's obstacles. But mm-hmm. every obstacle that you see in the path has a solution waiting underneath it. You just got to pick it up and look and say, right. oh, there's a way to get around that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's helping. That's bringing value to your client. And that's right. why I get referral business. So I don't have to go looking for business. Interesting. Most of it comes to me mm-hmm. right now getting a, a minor welcome onslaught of it. Nice. Because it's selling season for one thing. So I'm getting mm-hmm. enough work. I think in this next today, I've worked on three contracts and uh, which will all be listed by the end of the week or by Monday. And uh, now I've got uh, some major big ones. One of them's on Coeur d'Alene Lake. Mm. Uh, just some big things that can be, you know, large salary for me if I, nice. if I can. So, but again, it's like uh, every everything that you go through in real estate is uh, just text this guy right back. Mm-hmm. Everything that we go through in real estate is a thinking process. That's why I use that picture of me thinking. You've seen oh, that. yeah. You know what that was? Mm-hmm. I was reading a a manuscript here from a Hollywood writer Mm -hmm. knows me and he had sent me a script and I was sitting in this chair in this room out here is the uh, 10 acres that I live on Mm -hmm. forested land and it was dark at night and my reflection in the window was I looked up like this and I saw that (laughs) window and there was no interruption of a dirty window or anything it was like a mirror Mm -hmm. I took my cell phone and I did a selfie pose ah. like I first saw, and that's the picture that I got. That's a gotcha. selfie. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I like it because it's a thinking man. Mm-hmm. And that's the way you do great real estate is you think through everything, wow. you consider everything. You don't take anything for granted. You look for the surprises before mm-hmm. they get here. It's like in a real estate uh, representing a seller, for instance, I want to know everything about a property, everything, right. so that I'm not surprised by any question that comes at me. Mm, mm-hmm. I have at least a reasonable answer, if not a solid answer. And uh, because 
sometimes those questions can break the deal. You know, uh -huh. if I, uh, they're just going to go look elsewhere. Right. And so I'll try to be well armed and have the answers to everything. And uh, the more experience you gain, you know, like how we overcame, we both did try, made a good effort to overcome the obstacle of not connecting on this Zoom call. Right. You did a great job of that. <laughs> Thanks. And, uh, I'm, <laughs> Well, I'm real respectful of people's time. I, I wanted to take, you know, 20, 15, 15 to 20 minutes. And it's gone longer than I expected, but I really wanted to get to know you and find out and find out what you do. And That's also, at, this is a silly question. I'm sure I can find it on the internet, but I want to know your definition of it. What's the difference between a realtor and a broker? The broker has all the legal responsibilities. The uh, realtor is working for the broker. Oh, I am. Uh, uh, I could be my own broker. Mm -hmm. There are some individual cases, but there is an advantage to being part of a good brokerage. Mm. And the one that I have, I was number eight in Idaho to come into it. Mm -hmm. Now we have over 140 some realtors in that office. Okay, Working all over the Panhandle, mm -hmm. and because the model is really good. Uh, of how we do business, and I'm, this is the best company I've found. I oh, really wow. like them. Uh, they're, they're leading edge, breaking edge. They do a lot of stuff website-wise, which is what I'm building right now is my own website okay. to match what they provide. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, I'm just in the – I mean, I'm busy with clients. Right. So I don't sit here at my computer and just play all day on the computer. Yeah. And, <laughs> three counties i do a lot of driving i, I can imagine so uh cool and final two know. final two questions uh one what are you grateful for may i ask oh gosh that i'm alive <laughs> <laughs> that i have a heart for people oh because i really do mm -hmm. uh, i care about honest people and uh, if I can help honest people, doesn't matter, man, it does not matter to me where they come from, nice. where they're going or anything like that, as long as I see integrity in there somewhere. Beautiful. And uh, Beautiful. So that's what matters to me most. Mm. Uh, paychecks Excellent. are kind of over here on the side, but it's right. Nice <laughs> and and last question, uh, what, are you, what is your vision for you, your family, and your business in the future? Uh, I, I am wise enough at this point to recognize with uh, large companies like Zillow, mm -hmm. this is an example, but there are many efforts to overtake the real estate market. And like right. Amazon did, even Amazon wants to do real estate. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, what they're doing there, like, look at what happened when Uber came along to the taxi business. Really? Yep, oh, I know. Yeah. It's almost like non-existent anymore. Yeah, I know what and, you mean. Yeah, the hotel business when Airbnb came along. Yep. You know, while the same thing is happening in real estate, uh, there's great advantage to having a a licensed, experienced realtor who knows all the laws. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, because we we do uh, we have we have uh, ongoing real estate classes that we have to take. We have right. to, to, to stay current. That costs money to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's, there is an advantage when you have a realtor who is like a good lawyer, he knows his stuff. Mm. Or she, she knows her stuff mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to look out for you. That's my job is to look out for my client mm. to do the best I can for my client, not mm -hmm. for me. I get well paid and, and, uh, and I'm happy and satisfied when I have helped a client reach their goal and done it yes. rightly, done it legally. Mm. Uh, not, no underhanded stuff from my heart. I just, that's very important to me. Can't do it. Uh, yeah. Because the consequence always shows up in every movie. Mm. The underhanded guy is the loser. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Oh, man. Yeah. It's true. It is very true. Oh, my goodness. Dwayne, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, right. 
you see why I reached out to this gentleman to ask him some questions about real estate because uh, the whole purpose of Best Business Reviews TV is to interview the people who really care and give their customers and clients five-star service because it's just the right thing to do. Thank you so much for your time and watching this. I got to say one thing in closing. Yes. For your sake. Mm -hmm. Who's ever watching this at any time in the future, this guy has the right premise for what he's doing. Malcolm A. Smith. Had, what's the name of your show? Have you given it a show? Yeah, yeah. Best Business Reviews TV. I'm just interviewing the best businesses that give five-star customer service all over the place where I go. Well, well I'm honored. I'm very honored. To be honored. <laughs> but I want to say to all those who might have watched this or might be watching or will watch it in the future is that what you're doing, Malcolm, is a very good service hmm. because you're opening up the window of insight as to how industries work. Yes. How, how, yeah, how service works and why. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're selective. You're picking, I don't know, uh, I, I'm just honored that you picked me. <laughs> I have a lot to say. I think uh, I've had a lot of experience. So mm -hmm. thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care. <laughs> Thanks again, sure brother. Again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a beautiful day. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye.